Hi, I'm Spencer, an engineer at Handshake, and today I'd like to share a story about leveraging a code mod to eliminate almost four megabytes of JavaScript from a bundle. It began with originally setting out to make some general front-end performance improvements. Namely, this was introducing code splitting to break apart a single large bundle into many smaller chunks for the associated performance benefits. It began while originally setting out to make these improvements, and this led to discovering a chunk that was surprisingly large in comparison to all of the other chunks in the final out output. But fixing this required touching thousands of lines of code across hundreds of files to convert a lot of implicit code to be explicit. And finally, I want to share those results and learnings from going through this process. So this is roughly the output of an early iteration of code splitting visualized using the Webpack Bundle Analyzer. As you can notice, this orange chunk is significantly larger than the rest. This problem had existed beforehand, but I, it became really pronounced once we implemented code splitting. So the first step was to actually understand what was in this chunk. So this required breaking apart the single index.js file into its individual dependencies. So after fixing those dependencies, it became clear the vast majority of these packages were within the app Ford Awesome scope. This scope is the uh, scope for all of the Font Awesome icon library packages that we're currently depending on for many of our icons. This consists mainly of four packages, uh, regular, light, solid, and brand icon styles for the varying uses. So this was the code that we originally used to set up from the docs when we first added the packages and what was ultimately, ultimately responsible for adding almost four megabytes of JavaScript to our bundle. Including the brand icons, that's over 4,500 icons being included, even though at most we're maybe using a few hundred unique icons. So how do we go about fixing this? So previously, we were referencing all of these icons using a string because we had added all of the icons to this global library, so these icons could just be looked up at runtime using a string. But we need to convert these to be explicit imports so that we could remove this original setup code that was adding all of the icons. And this was necessary that, so Webpack can then determine exactly which icons are used, and any dead code can be eliminated or tree shaken uh, from the final bundle that's not explicitly imported. So it would have likely taken days for me to manually go through these thousands of unique usages. But fortunately, close to this time, I had stumbled across the React code mods. And this uses JS code shift, which I thought could be a useful tool for this. So I decided this was a good fit to go ahead and try using a code mod to automate as much of this as possible and keep as much of my sanity as possible. So to keep, use a code mod, you need a pretty clear set of rules. So using test-driven approach works fairly well. So this is a base case uh, test input with the input and output at the top and bottom. And this gear represents the custom transform that we'll be writing uh, to use with JS code shift. And then we can use the JS code shift APIs to make the desired transformations to uh, convert the given input into the output. So this is a, a, a snippet of that transform, and we're using the API provided by JS code, code shift to take in the file and convert it to an abs abstract syntax tree, or AST. And this is a tree representation of the source code with the different pieces of the code represented as nodes in this tree. And using those JS code shift helpers, we can then find all of the font awesome icon components and focus in specifically on only icons that are a string literal. So this is a screenshot from astexplorer.net, which is an in invaluable tool to paste in a piece of code and quickly see what the corresponding AST would be for that piece of code. And this is roughly what uh, the font awesome icon component portion of the tree would look like from the previous code sample that we were focusing in on. So you can see the icon prop with the value of a string literal. So now that we've found those icons, we need to go ahead and actually replace the string value with an actual icon definition. So now that we have, let's say, the string minus circle, we need to convert that to camel case and prefix fa, and then replace that string literal with this new JS expression, which is a valid icon definition. So now we're able to find all of those components and replace the string, for example, in this case, minus circle with the corresponding JS expression. But now that value hasn't been defined. So now we need to define this value by adding the corresponding import somewhere at the top. And for this example, we can just arbitrarily insert it, say, after the first import statement. So to get started, we can first find that first import declaration in the input that we want to insert additional imports after. And now slightly modifying our replacement logic to as we're going through each of these nodes, not only replacing the string, but also uh, adding an import for the corresponding icon. So this will now handle that first test case entirely, converting a string into a valid icon definition, adding the associated import, um, but now there's also the array syntax, which has two elements, and that first being the icon style, and the second being the icon. So in order to handle arrays, we need to first define all of those different possible font styles in their packages. So we can declare those at the top of our transform. And now we're not only looking for an icon prop with a string, but an icon prop with a JS expression where that value is an array. So the first element in this array we can use to dynamically look up the proper package, whether that's regular, solid, light. Um, and then the final or second element is uh, the icon. And we can 
transform that in the same way as the previous example. So now this will also handle the array syntax and replace it with the proper icon for also from the proper uh, corresponding package. So for example, this first icon is from the FAR or FAR package, so that icon is being imported from that package. But there are a number of other edge cases. For example, maybe we're aliasing this component or wrapping this comp component in other components, or maybe using a dot notation which produces a slightly different AST. Um, and we also have to consider handling multiple icons from the same package and avoiding those duplicate import statements, and also avoiding icon naming collisions when importing the same icon from different packages. And the full version linked at the end handles all of these edge cases. So what were the results of going through this? So doing this, this eliminated almost 90% of the icons which were never used but were being included in the bundle anyways. And this accounted for nearly 20% of the overall bundle size as you could see in the uh, original uh, Webpack analy analyzer. So this means less code for users to download, less time spent parsing that code in the browser which could take a long time and overall faster builds. But ideally this would have been prevented in the first place. So there's two methods here. The first being a Webpack performance budget. This isn't bulletproof, but it will at least err if any asset uh, exceeds the defined limit. So now uh, at build time this will err. In addition, we also modified our icon wrapper component to only allow an icon definition. So this will now throw a type error if a string or array is used uh, in past as the icon prop. So a few quick lessons that I took away from this. Making sure to analyze and know what's in your bundle and inspecting anything that might be too large. Considering a code mod, if you need to make a large scale mechanical refactor with a well-defined set of rules, uh, thinking about ways to prevent this, such as a Webpack performance budget. And the full code mod that handles all the edge cases is, is available on GitHub. And much of this content can be found in blog post format on my personal blog, scoby.dev. Thanks. <laughs>